Mate inside to Messi. Now Neymar, Neymar, Neymar. Let's go, guys. Neymar gets a goal on his return to Barcelona. Or oh, Griezmann's through the run from Neymar. Left Griezmann with so much space. And Griezmann does not miss chances like that. Antoine Griezmann continues to perform for Barcelona. So here we are back again with another episode of the Barcelona career mode series. Last episode we went all in and brought in Neymar from PSG for 120 million. We also managed to beat Atletico Madrid in the finals of the Spanish Super Cup. We beat them 4-2 winning this trophy for the first time in this series. We are still in the transfer window and in today's episode we're going to try and potentially bring in Alejandro Grimaldo to Barcelona. And it's not just that, we've got La Liga as well as Spanish Cup action in today's episode which should be a ton of fun. So if you guys are enjoying this series, let's keep the support coming, smash out 2000 likes, that'd be brilliant. And if you are new around here, subscribe for more FIFA 20 career mode content. Press conference time and if you guys want to get involved, make sure to drop in your questions down in the comments section below. First one of the day, would you ever consider bringing in Mbappe in the future or not? I don't think so. I think we've made enough attacking signings and I don't think Kylian Mbappe is the kind of player we need here at Barcelona. I'm pretty happy with our team and I think Mbappe is not going to be a transfer we make in this Barcelona career mode. Maybe when we're coaching a different team, we can go for Mbappe. But right now, I don't think Mbappe to Barcelona is in my plans. Next question, who should be Barca's front three in real life? For me, in my opinion, it's got to be Leo Messi, Griezmann and Dembele. But we know that's not going to happen. Ernesto Valverde will never bench Luis Suarez. But if it was up to me, I would go with Messi, Griezmann and Dembele. I think Dembele offers something that nobody else offers in the team you know the pace down at that left flank Antoine Griezmann we know how good he can be in the central position he should be playing there Messi is brilliant wherever he plays so I think that should be Barca's front three I feel like Luis Suarez is past it I know he can score a few spectacular goals here and there but consistency just isn't there with Luis Suarez at the moment so I think Messi Griezmann Dembele would be my front three in real life next question would you consider playing Messi as a false nine at some point in this season Probably not because it's not necessary. I think for Messi to play as a false nine, he needs to be a lot quicker, which he isn't at the moment. 76 sprint speed means that I can't really play him in that false nine role. Instead, we're playing him as a cam. So he's not going to be, you know, playing in that false nine role, bombing forward, dropping back as well and creating. His job now solely is to create goals and potentially score a few through late runs into the box. So false nine, definitely out of question. The plan for Messi is now to play him as a midfielder in that cam role, in behind Neymar and Antoine Griezmann. And so far, things are working smoothly with Messi in this new position. That's the press conference wrapped up. Let's move on. We signed Neymar in the last episode and guess what? He's already won the player of the episode award which is superb to see. He was brilliant in that last episode in the Spanish Super Cup picking up a lot of assists and goals as well. I'm hoping he can keep this up but anyways, Neymar wins the player of the episode award. So at the moment we are in the process of selling Jordi Alba to West Ham and Sergio Busquets to Man City. Of course the deals haven't gone through yet so we don't know if they're going to leave or not we'll find out as we progress through this episode here's a quick look at our season goals i'm hoping in today's episode we can see more from ansu fati as we do have spanish cup action clean sheets in la liga would be welcome just two more goals from outside the box and we complete the sharpshooter challenge as well so we start off today's episode with a big game against Sevilla at the camp now now last episode we got a bit of hope with real madrid losing to atletico giving us back that four-point gap, which means if we continue winning, there's a chance that Real Madrid could slip up and we can overtake them. So we've got Sevilla, who are eighth in La Liga. A tricky game at the camp now, but we've got to be ready for it. This is how I'm lining up my team against Sevilla. We've got basically our strongest 11 with Neymar and Griezmann starting up top. Messi in that cam role. De Jong starts as well. Long lay in the lineup. Junior Firpo starting ahead of Alba because of all the transfer business going on around Jordi Alba. So I thought it made sense to play Firpo. But this is our team. We're playing Sevilla at the camp now. Let's go out there and pick up all three points. Barcelona Sevilla is always an exciting game, especially at the camp. Now we've got Neymar returning to La Liga action 
for the first time in this series so I can't wait to see how he performs. We've been scoring a lot of goals lately especially in the Spanish Super Cup probably because we've added Neymar into our attack and I'm hoping we can keep that up. Alex Vidal looking to bring it forward for Sevilla, former Barca player right there. Now it's Oliver Torres inside. Junior Firpo with a proper good challenge there to block off the Sevilla player. Good defending. Here's Messi on the ball. Cleverly done. Now Arthur back inside. Saleo Messi who looks to bring it forward. Still Messi. Messi finds Bernardo who tries to control it well. Does so but drags his shot wide. Big chance wasted by us. Sevilla on the attack now. Trent needs to defend this well. He doesn't as a big chance falls for Luke de Jong. But the Dutchman couldn't convert. Marc-Andre Ter Stegen steps up yet again and makes an incredible save. Here goes the Brazilian on the attack. Still Neymar. The Elastico inside to Griezmann. Can't get a shot off but second time he shoots and this time he does score. Antoine Griezmann continues scoring goal after goal after goal. The guy is just a goal machine now and now in this front two with Neymar he is just balling out Neymar won't get the assist for this one but it was still a fabulous goal Griezmann strikes yet again his ninth goal in La Liga and we make it 1-0 against Sevilla just before half time can we add to our scoreline here's Griezmann does well to keep the ball finds Bernardo as well Shimmy inside now it is Leo Messi I'm gonna try and curl this one in Leo Messi is just unbelievable yet another curling effort from him and this one finds the back of the net again as Barcelona make it 2-0 against Sevilla this is again another goal from outside the box finesse shots from outside the box with Leo Messi especially are just so overpowered I don't know why the game is kind of you know stuttering but anyways Leo Messi picks his spot and then bang no chance for the Sevilla keeper there as we make it 2-0 in this one. Looks to maybe open up some space. A bit of trickery from Neymar. Griezmann. Now it is Arthur turns. Tries to curl it in. Oh, it takes the post. But the build-up play for that goal. Did you guys see that skill move there from Neymar? To just try and tempt the opposing defender. It was brilliant. Here's Frankie de Jong. Sees Leo Messi. Now Messi strikes and almost scoring there past Sergio Rico. Still 2-0 Barca. Sevilla. Ronnie Lopez has beaten me there. Oliver Torres. But Junior Fidbo with an interception. He's been strong all game long. But we've just given the ball away to Sevilla once again. As it's Ronnie Lopez. Now Jordan making the shot. But... Testegen, who's been in fine form with yet another save. I would love to keep a clean sheet in this game. Perfect time to bring on Usman Dembele to give us some extra pace. Messi comes off after putting in a great performance. Alessandro Florenzi is beating me there. Cut back into Oliver Torres. Now Luke de Jong shoots and no, there goes our clean sheet. That's so frustrating and now Sevilla have a bit of hope. Messi isn't even on the pitch now so... This could turn out to be a problematic game. Bernardo Silva finds Antoine Griezmann back in to Bernardo as Barcelona look to end this game off. Still Bernardo, the Portuguese international. Oh, the cutback was stopped by Oliver Torres. But that's that for this one. We do get ourselves to win against Sevilla. A difficult game of football at the camp now. But Griezmann and Messi scored and helped us get through this one. Three points in the bag. How satisfied are you with Koulibaly? I mean, he's been great, but that's expected considering he's one of the highest rated players in the team. But... He hasn't been all that impressive, but I'm just going to say he must keep his momentum up. He's doing well, not that bad. Were you discouraged by the last goal scored? I'm going to say we had it in the bag, but I was definitely a bit disappointed because, well, a clean sheet was gone. Well, 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 Jordi Alba to West Ham seems to be a done deal. And now we... Sh so we are halfway through La Liga. All teams have played 19 games and Real Madrid are at the top of La Liga with 52 points. We are four points behind Real Madrid, a couple behind Atletico. Not too bad of a position to be in, but... I'm hoping we can make the push to top spot. I really want to retain our league title this season. Well, 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 Jordi Alba to West Ham has been confirmed for 49 million. He's been a great servant to the club for all these recent years and also for us in this series. He helped us win the Champions League last season, but now he's getting old and it's time to move on. So, we've now sold Jordi Alba. We've basically got unlimited funds. It is now time to bring in a replacement. And as I've discussed before, there's only one man I want to sign for that position and it's Alejandro Grimaldo. He's valued at about 46 million, so this might prove to be an expensive transfer, but let's bring him to Barcelona. So I'm starting with a 50 million offer for Alejandro Grimaldo. Let's see if Benfica are willing to work with that. I know he's valued at 46, 50 million might not be good enough, but let's see what Benfica come back and say and wow, they won 82.2 million, so... Let's counter with just 60 and just see what they're saying. 
I mean, 60 million, I think, is a fair offer for a fullback. You know what? Let's give them 60.9. I can't be asked to change that. Anyway, 60.9. Let's see what Benfica say. Okay, they're willing to accept 66.6. That's fair. I'm going to accept it. A 5% sell-on clause as well. But that is what we're going to be paying for Alejandro Grimaldo. This is what I'm offering Alejandro Grimaldo. Important squad role. Four-year contract length. 120,000 in wages. And a 1 million signing bonus. Let's see what him and his agent come back and say. And they think it's a fair offer. And with that... We've just signed Alejandro Grimaldo back to Barcelona. Alejandro Grimaldo set to replace Alpa. That is why we've signed him. Here is, of course, him being announced. He's going to wear number 16 for Barcelona. And even Sergio Busquets to Man City has been sold. Now, I've already discussed why I'm selling Busquets. I think it's time for us to start giving Ricky Pui, Jelenia, and all these other midfielders more game time. And it makes sense to sell a 32-year-old midfielder in Sergio Busquets. Again, he's been a great servant to the club. He's a legend, but it's now time to move on. As soon as I sold Busquets, this is the message I get from Frankie de Jong. I know you will be eventually looking for a replacement midfielder, but I think I can fill the role if you give me a chance. Well, I don't know if he's noticed. He's actually the replacement, so... I'm just going to say you're the man for the job because he is going to be starting head of Busquets like he has basically been doing since the start of this season. All about the Spanish Cup now as we'll be up against Eibar in the round of 32 should be an interesting game. Now because it's the Spanish Cup I will be rotating the squad completely and giving all the youth players a chance which should be a lot of fun. So this is how I'm lining up our team for this one against Eibar. Basically giving all the youth players and our second team players a chance. Oscar Hara starts this one. Ansu Fati as well. Ricky Puig in the lineup. Alenia captains the team. We've got Tordibo starting. And also Alejandro Grimaldo making his return to Barcelona. His debut with the first team should be a fun game. This is how the team lines up a 4-3-3 wide formation because I feel like having wingers will be more helpful with these players. That's the plan. Let's go out there and knock Eibar out. Oscar Hara. Now it could be Nelson Smedo who's managed to push forward and here goes the Portuguese. Oh, come on. How he didn't he score from there? Like, come on, man. Smedo, you've got to be doing better. Nelson Smedo releases Oscar Hara who is just about onside, I think. And here goes... The Youth Academy prospect, Oscar Hara, looks to bring it inside. Finds Ricky Puig. This should be a goal. It is a really weird finish there from Ricky Puig, but I don't care. With his left foot, he's managed to put that home as Barcelona make it 1-0 against Eibar. Oscar Hara continues to create goals for us as he picks up the assist for this one. A solid cutback from him after, of course, the skill move to open up some space. Great movement from Ricky Puig as well. The finish was extremely weird, but it doesn't matter. It was in the back of the net. 1-0 Barcelona. Oscar Hara, now to Nelson Smedos, bombing forward this right flank. He's made a good couple of runs in this game so far. Finds Oscar Hara, could be a goal for him, but well defended by Eibar. Lautaro again, inside to Fabian, who takes a good touch. Fabian looking to open up some space, goes for the curling effort and almost scores a brilliant goal there for us, but just misses our new number four, taking a shot from outside the box, but... Just wide. Oh, Lautaro. What a touch from Lautaro Martinez. This should be a goal. It is a goal. Lautaro Martinez making it 2-0 against Eibar. A brilliant finish from the Argentine. And what a time to score because it's just before the halftime whistle. We've got to have a look at the replay for this one because that touch Lautaro Martinez took there was just brilliant to sell the defender. The finish was perfect and Barcelona have made it 2-0 before halftime. Eibar on the attack now. Morales, we know he's a quality player. Still Morales on the ball. Gets it back. Maybe looking for the crossing option. Somehow gets the cross off. Ricky Puig doing defensive work. Forces Neto ultimately to make the save. And finally Konate gets it away. Eibar are really trying to get back into this one. Ricky Puig releases Ansu Fati and Barcelona on the attack with Ansu Fati. Can the Spaniard score this time? He goes for goal but straight towards the keeper. But we get ourselves a penalty and a chance for us to make it 3-0. Ansu Fati goes down inside the box. And guess what? We're going to give this penalty to Ansu Fati. I really hope we can score this penalty because it'll help us with our objectives. So I'm going to try and go to the right of the keeper. Let's see if this works. Come on, man. I'm so bad with penalties. Sees Ansu Fati in acres of space. Big chance for him now to score. He's already missed a penalty, so I'm sure he would love to get on the score sheet. Ansu Fati looks to curl this one in, but can't. Lunin with a good save. Lautaro on the attack now as Barcelona look to make it 3-0 to end this game off. Still Lautaro, Alenia. Now it's Oscar Hara with a chance to score. I overplayed it. I should have just gone for the goal with Oscar Hara or even Alenia, to be honest. 
Fabian back to Fati. Oh, that's a beautiful pass to Alejandro Grimaldo, who's got it forward, cuts it back to Lautaro. No, it's off the post. The build-up play was just pure Barcelona-esque football. That deserved a goal. Oh, here we go on the counter-attack. Oscar Hara, he's very low on stamina, but he's still pushing forward to try and score. Laying this one off to Lautaro, probably the wrong choice, but that should be it for this one. We've knocked out a bar, two goals to nil in the Spanish Cups round of 32. We move on to the next round. A good performance and a good to see that, you know, the youngsters were able to get a result against the tough a bar side. We're through to the round of 16. So a question about Alejandro Grimaldo's debut. What do you make of such a strong debut? I'm going to say it's clear to see why I brought him in. And there he goes. Moral just goes up. He had a great debut to be fair. So we've drawn Sevilla in the round of 16 of the Spanish Cup. Should be an interesting fixture against them. Difficult but interesting. Atletico Madrid are also in the round of 16. And so are Real Madrid. Looks like the big boys are still alive in the Spanish Cup. We've got more La Liga action in today's episode. As we'll be going up against Espanyol. Catalan derby time and I'm hoping we can pick up a win against them. They're not doing that well in La Liga. They are 14th in the league but this is a derby. Anything can happen in these kind of games so let's just get into this one and hopefully get ourselves to win. So far in La Liga, Eden Hazard has just been out of this world. 19 games, 19 goals. How crazy is that? Cavani for Atleti has been banging in goals left, right and centre. Messi scored 10 times for us, Griezmann coming in with 9 but there's a reason why Real Madrid are top of La Liga. Hazard is one of them. Barcelona versus Espanyol. The first team is back in action for this game. They got a good week's rest because of that Copa del Rey game. Neymar Griezmann up top. Messi in that cam role. Arthur Silva and De Jong in midfield. Firpo Longley, Koulibaly and Trent at the back to stay get in goal. We are taking this game against Espanyol very seriously and I'm walking away with three points, guys. We've got to do it. Also, I'm not starting Grimaldo because his stamina is low. We'll slowly ease him into our first team. For now, I trust Junior Firpo with the place in the first team. So let's get out there and win. I don't know if you guys can see it in the video, but because of the sunlight, it feels like there's a big kit clash and I really can't make a difference out of the Espanyol kit. And the Barcelona one, of course I can, but it's difficult. So I'm hoping that won't play a factor in this game because that'll be frustrating. Joel Linton for Espanyol. Koulibaly blocks him, but the cross eventually does come in. The header from Marc Roca was a good one from that position, but off target. Espanyol actually looking decent in this one. Good challenge from Longley. Could we start something from this attack though? Frankie de Jong. Finds Leo Messi. Here we go on the counter-attack with Neymar. This is where we can be absolutely deadly. Neymar on the attack for us. Neymar looks to bring it inside. Neymar goes for goal and almost scores as well. What a lethal counter-attack that was from Barcelona. Messi still keeps it in. Messi looking to maybe cross this one in. Does exactly that. Arthur on the volley. Misses. How has he not scored that? He had a free chance to score there. Look at that. He connected with it pretty well, but... Just wide. Antoine Griezmann pushing forward now. Inside to Leo Messi. This should be a goal. No, the keeper denies Messi from that angle. I mean, how? Fair play, man. This Espanyol keeper has been decent in this game. Messi now leading the charge. I would love to score before the halftime whistle and Griezmann might help us do exactly that. Here goes Antoine Griezmann. 1v1. Tries to curl it in. He misses. How am I missing these simple chances, man? I don't know why my finishing has just gone for a toss in this game. Junior Firpo finds Bernardo. Griezmann, now Bernardo again. Back to Griezmann. This could be a goal. No, the keeper saves. Griezmann was onside as well. For some reason, Leo Messi's stamina is extremely low and maybe it's time to bring on Usman Dembele. He's been asking to play more. Now is his chance to turn this game around. Oh, cross comes in. It's a dangerous one as well. No! How have they actually scored from a cross? Crossing doesn't even work in FIFA 20, man. And they've scored that. Kalinic with the header, Espanyol have taken the lead. And we stupidly brought off Messi as well. Oh my god, are we really going to drop points against our rivals Espanyol? Antoine Griezmann does brilliantly, but there's literally no passing option for Griezmann. He has to go solo, but the keeper denies him again. What are Neymar and the rest doing, man? They're like, they're like just running straight in a line rather than making good runs. It's so frustrating to even see. Oh, here goes Usman Dembele with pace. This is Usman Dembele's chance. Go on, Dembele, please score. Let's go, guys. Dembele comes on and scores one for us. We are back in at 71st minute of this game. Usman Dembele coming up clutch and scoring off the bench. Brilliant, but we've still got 20 minutes. I've got to go for the win. It is now Trent. 
Back into Antoine Griezmann. This is brilliant. Cut back into Neymar. What's he doing? Why is he not going towards the ball? Neymar ultimately does score. I was, I was going to break my controller because I was holding down the sprint button. Yet for some reason, Neymar wasn't going towards the ball. But ultimately, all well and good. He does eventually score, getting it onto his right foot. Barcelona make it 2-1. This has been one hell of a roller coaster game of FIFA, man. Because look at that. Look at this. For some reason, Neymar was taking months to just reach that ball. But ultimately, he got the job done. Barcelona lead 2-1. Our job now is to defend well. Mark Roca with a chance at the death. Cross comes in. We've got to clear it away. We do. Let's just boot it upfield. And there you go. That's it for this one. We've beaten Espanyol. Two goals to one. A massive result for Barcelona. I thought we were going to drop points in this game. But Dembele came on as a super sub and was brilliant. Barcelona have beaten Espanyol. Well, 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 would you believe it? Real Madrid have dropped points again. They've lost their second game of the season, which means we're just one point behind them and two points behind Atletico Madrid. Just goes to show how important that win was against Espanyol. In the next episode, we're going to wrap up the transfer window games against Sevilla and Athletic Bilbao as well. We're also going to discuss more potential signings. If you guys have any suggestions, put them down in the comment section below. We've got enough money to spend. It's completely dependent on you guys. Maybe a midfielder because we sold Sergio Busquets. It's up to you guys. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Phil Jones to Barcelona might actually be happening, especially considering how bad we've been with our objectives in this episode. We barely made any progress apart from scoring one goal from outside the box. Hopefully in the future episodes, we can start making more progress. I don't want to be playing Phil Jones at the back. Before we wrap up today's episode, you guys need to make your vote count for the player of the episode. Award a couple of nominees once again, one of them being Ricky Puig, who I thought was superb in this episode, scored a goal for us in the Spanish Cup and all round his game was amazing. Your second nominee is going to be Antoine Griezmann who was brilliant in the game against Espanyol grabbing an assist that he was also amazing in that first game against Sevilla so he had to be nominated. Those two are your nominees. Click the i button on the top right of your screen to vote for either of them. So that's that for today's episode of the Barcelona Career Mode series. An eventful episode as we signed Alejandro Grimaldo, sold Alba and Busquets and we made progress in La Liga as well. So hopefully we can continue doing exactly that in the next episode. Trans window is still open, so you never know. We might just make more signings. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. But if you guys have enjoyed today's video, a like would be brilliant. Subscribe if you are new around here. And I'll catch you guys next time.